Hi everyone, so today I'm back again doing another demonstration for you. So I thought I would do something that's a little bit more of a development from last week. So last week I did a cushion cover which I, from your comments, you really liked it and I enjoyed doing it. So I thought I will sort of do something similar to that but have a, a very different take. Using all of the Cadence products and some of our imagination products as well, I thought I'd really show you what you can do because Myself and Elizabeth, we do a lot of very shabby sheet pieces and um, I think it'd be nice to show you something a little bit more crisp finished and a little contemporary, just for a bit of edge. Um, and talking of Elizabeth, we've got Elizabeth with us here today. So Hello. Elizabeth, we're keeping our two metres and we are <laughs> going to be reading out the questions again. So Elizabeth's going to help me out, let me know who's joined, reading the questions, so I'll be able to answer. In fact, I need to loosen my apron, it's a little bit tight in here. <laughs> just had my lunch, I do apologise. So yeah, Elizabeth's going to be helping out with the questions and we're going to be sort of bouncing off one another, giving a little bit of crafty advice and helping out with whatever you might want to know. So I spoke, I think, the week before last that I was going away for the weekend and whilst I was away, I stayed in a really nice cottage, it was lovely, and there were some cushions there and I really liked them and I thought, you know what, they're actually really achievable to make with all of the cadence and imagination products. So I thought, well why not actually have my first attempt at doing it here on a live with you because I'm saying it's achievable, so it should be, and I will prove that by sort of giving this a first attempt. So, I don't know if we've got anyone joined yet already. We've got June, who's just said hi, can only stay for a bit. We've got Stephanie, who said hi, guys from Scotland. Oh, and hi, Stephanie from Scotland. Nikki as well. Say oh, hi, David. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> right, so to get started, what I've got first is I've done again what I did last week, and I made a cushion envelope. Just out of a lightweight cotton. I've used run it through the sewing machine, really cheap to make, really achievable, and only took a couple of minutes to do. And what I've actually done is covered it, as you might think, what on earth is that going across the front? Is I've used the mixed media tape. Now this is from Imagination Crafts, and this is our tape. It comes that you get two rolls of this in a pack, it is brilliant. So unlike masking tape, this really does help against the bleeding whenever you're masking off areas for your paintwork, holding any stencils. It is perfect and I'm just going to show you the effect that you can get with it and the crisp edges it will create so a definite must. It's on the website as well so check that one out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be covering different colours in the segments on this and using the marble sprays. So I think it's going to be quite different. It's going to, I'm not quite sure how it's going to look. I've got a vision in my head so we'll just go with it and see what we get. So my first step for this is I'm going to take my Dora Hybrid It Metallics. Now this choice I'm using this one is it works really well on fabric. You get a lovely thick pigment, you've got your crushed metal flakes in there so it gives a really nice pearlescent finish, they're absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to use this one and then I'm also going to use a semi-matte hybrid acrylic just to give a bit of variation between the finishes. And this is what I'm going to use to block out certain patches of my cushion with. Um, so I'm going to get started. So I'm going to go straight in with my gold paint and think the way that I want it start this way around and I'll show you as I'm doing it so you can get an idea what I'm actually working with. So take my brush, I've got a bit of water on there, take that off and go into my paint. I'm going to start on this triangle down here at the bottom and I'll sort of judge it as I go around what I think looks best where. So taking my paint, as you can see that it's gone straight onto the fabric and with one coverage it's already given us a full thick cover over that fabric. I don't even need to give that a second coat, it's perfect. And because it's the hybrid, we know it's going to stay in place and it will be washable. I would always recommend you never know, putting them on a high wash anyway, especially with your homemade pieces. Um, but you can put them obviously through a hand wash, 30 degree wash, that sort of thing is fine. But I would usually recommend hand washing something if you've got some delicate pieces on there that you've made with your rice papers. Uh, we just had Karen say hello from Costa Blanca. Oh, hello. Oh, how lovely. I would love to be there right now. Hello. <laughs> and Diane's just said hi, and Tasha's just said hello. Sorry I missed last week. And we've just had Helen say oh. hello, David, as well. Hi, Kasha. Hi, Helen. Thank you ever so much for joining me. So happy to have you all here watching. So I've already covered one triangle there, and I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do two more gold. So I spin this round that way and take my paint again and it uses such little paint so you get a really decent size quantity of paint so in here we've got ourselves the let's see the volume these are 90 mils these pots we do them in a smaller part and a larger part with the doors and this one it goes so far I've probably had this one now for at least a month and a half and I'm not even halfway down it yet and I use it all the time 
it's my go-to paint because I just think the finish is beautiful. So definitely worth having because you're going to get so much out of your product. And I think that's what's most important because with these paints, with being a hybrid and being so versatile, is that you've got one paint to do everything for you. And that's one thing I think I say all the time is one paint for all jobs instead of having 10 paints for 10 different jobs. And it's going to last you a long time doing it as well. So I'm going to take one more section. I think, in fact, I think I will do this little one here. Gold. And then what I'm going to do once I've done these is I'm going to blast them with the hairdryer just to finish them off so they're nice and uh, nice and dry and then what I would do is then take some paper over it and iron it to heat set it all. That way I know it's going to be permanent. We've just heard B Wood say hi for a second time watching um, and she loves what you're doing. Oh thank you, thank you for joining and uh, it's nice to see what everyone's going to think of this because it's a little different. I mean Elizabeth always say oh let's try and do that with the paint, let's try and do this, let's try something different. And we're very, we very much love creating the rustic, authentic sort of shabby chic pieces. Just a bit more contemporary. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Yeah. So it, it's definitely, and that's the versatility of cadence and imagination. Is that all of these products allow you to create that sort of contemporary background or a very nice country feel. So you've got all those different variations in there. So what I'm going to do now is take a bit of my cadence hybrid black, and this is a semi matte paint. So once again, it's the hybrid. So it'll go on all surfaces. I've got two bottles here. I think I'll go with this one because this one's running out a little bit and then I've got another one to get going. So this again will go onto all of your surfaces, fabric, it will go onto metal, it will go onto glass, it will go onto stone, ceramic, all those different surfaces and you're gonna get a good thick coverage as well. So I'm gonna take it straight to this one here. And when I've put all this tape down, I have been sure to press all my edges so that I try not to get any bleed under there. And if I do, if I've missed any areas that I've not, I can always go over it with a bit of white. And when I take all of this tape off, it will leave me with a white line. So I may actually want to paint that in the future, a different colour. Um, as you can see, the seams underneath there. So I'm just going to quickly go over that. But yeah, it will leave a nice white line and I could completely change that if I wish. So it's really entirely up to you. And you could do different patterns with your tapes. You could do stripes with it. You could mask off areas. You could use your essential dye circles, all those different shapes, mask them down. And I'm gonna do something a little like that after this one. Um, so watch out for that as well. So we've just had Amanda say, hi David, do you have to put paper inside? Obviously you could just have it transferring. So thank you ever so much for your question, Amanda. I got this last week and you know what? I said I would try it and I've not put it in there. But I would actually recommend doing that in case you're using a paint that is a little bit wetter than what I'm using. These dry very quickly, they don't spread so much. And let's have a look, I'm just having a check through. And I've not actually got any bleed through yet, so it's still dry on the other side. So it's really important to know with your paints of exactly what they're gonna do. And with Cadence, that's why you can always be assured to know that you're gonna get what you want with the product. And I know that I don't want that to bleed all the way through. It's not gonna be super wet, even though it is water-based. It's not going to ruin my project, but I would say, depending on what paint you use, if you feel more comfortable, I would put something inside it just in case. Yeah, I always tend to put yeah. something inside. Yeah, you're a little bit more case. prepared <laughs> than me, a little bit more organised. Just in case. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I've done it, I've done it, and then, yeah, it's always best to be prepared. So I would say just, yeah, I would do that, just to make sure. Um, get my water here. I'm going to put a little bit more black out. I think I'm going to do this section here, and I've got three that I want to show you something that really exciting I'm going to do with. So we just had Nikki saying, I love this style of design and it works on so many different home decor pieces. It does. Thank you for your comment, Nikki. That's the thing that I wanted to show is that we want everyone to sort of be involved. We want everyone that's got different tastes to be included in these. I want everyone that's got their own sort of personal taste, whether you've got a take on it, let me know. But it's getting everyone together because sometimes if I only see maybe one or two ideas with a product, I sort of think, oh, what else could I do with that? And then as soon as we get all the samples in from the design team, which are amazing, it instantly makes me think, oh my God, I could have done that. That's amazing. Yeah. You realise, oh, we could have used that in a different way, yeah. how we could have incorporated that into our work. So it makes Definitely. It bit, does make it a little bit better. 100%. Because people can take inspiration. That's what it's all about. I think sharing all your techniques, a bit of inspiration. And some of you may have done this before, um, which I'd be interested to know if you have. Let me know how it's worked out for you or if you've got any pictures. But it's very interesting just to sort of see what everyone else's take is on everything because 
Across the board in craft, there's so much that you can do. You've had Tasha say, how thick is the fabric? So this fabric, it's a very lightweight cotton, this one, but it's actually quite durable. So I would say thickness of the fabric, I'm not 100% sure on, but it's at least, it's probably about... Cotton, isn't it? it was probably about the same thickness, or W thickness as a 340 card stock, I would say. That's about the thickness that you would get with yeah. this. So it runs through a sewing machine nicely, and this is just some, it's some linen that I've picked up, it's very cheap off the roll, some off cuts. Um, but you could use any, any weight fabric you like, you could use some leather, you could use it on... Uh, yeah, it yeah, you could do it on all those different things. There's so many still ideas that we've got to explore yet. I think I'm changing bottles in between paints, I've not even realised. So you probably have noticed I haven't. I don't know if I'm using this one or this no. one. But we'll, uh, we'll stick with either because they're both the same paint. And that's one really good point as well with Cadence, is that if you've run out of one paint when you're doing a project and you want to go on to your next part, even though the batteries may be different, you still get the same consistency and the same coloration with your paint. It's always the same. It looks brilliant. So they're always definitely meeting their customers' needs. So I absolutely love working with them. Ruth from Lincolnshire said hello. Hi and Ruth. Kasia has just said, can you wash this in the washing machine? Hi everyone, and thank you for your question, Kasia. So yes, with this, once it's heat set, you could put it through the washing machine, it'll be fine. Um, I always tend to hand wash mine anyway, just because I know that when I paint them, if I may have not heat set somewhere or something like that, I want to be safe, but it will go through the washing machine. Or if you've used the Cadence paints on a surface such as acrylic, um, perspex or glass, uh, ceramic, you can put them in the dishwasher as well. So you always want to make sure that you heat setting it before you do that. And they do permanently stay on there. So if it's a surface that you don't want it on, be very sure that you're going to mask that away. Otherwise it will stay. So I'm going to take a hair dryer. I would use a heat gun, but I want to be careful on my fabric. So I'm just going to do this a little further away from you so I don't blast you all away. So, enough of that. I think we're pretty much touch dry now on all the surfaces. I'm not going to bore you with the hair dryer any longer. So what I'm going to do now is what I've been waiting for. Now this is the real wow factor of the sample and something that I love doing. So we're going to touch on our marble sprays from Cadence. So I've got all three shades here. I've got my silver, black and gold. And with these you create a really nice marble effect. So you can do this on all surfaces again, on your fabric. You can do them on your concrete, your wood, stone, all those different surfaces. Um, but always make sure, as you can see I've done today, I've covered all of the desk around me so because it does come out quite fast. But that's the beauty of the product, is that it gives you a really nice spray and it covers all of the way you want to uh, marble basically. So what I'm doing here is, even though I've masked off, I just want to cover these areas so I know that these bits aren't going to get covered by the marble. And I've got a little bit there and a bit here. And I've got gold there and I've got black. And well, I've got gold there as well. So I think what I'm going to go for is the gold spray. So, yes, definitely put my right lid on the craft one this time. Got my gold. And you always want to make sure you're doing it in a nice, well ventilated area. Have a window open or wherever, but it's not, it's non toxic, so it's not seriously strong or anything like that. So it's absolutely fine to use. It's perfectly safe. So, as you can see, you always want to keep it about a 30 centimeter distance away from the surface you're working on. And you want to give just a quick light spray. Don't do too much because then you can always add to it and it dries really quickly about two minutes so i think i quite like that i might put a tiny bit more here we are and it dries super quick so if i take these away and what i'm going to do is give it a quick waft just with some cool air you don't need to apply your heat hair dry or anything and that will have pretty much almost dried and then what I'm going to do now is mask up this area here. Here we are. And take my paper again. I'm just using some old cardstock for this, some old papers that I've not ended up using. Always hang on to all of your spares and everything because it always comes in use. I found that anyway. I'm always using extra cloths and bits and dyes that we always store in a big box. Now I've taken the black. 
so I've got my black one here. I'm going to do the same again on here, so holding it still about that 30 centimetre distance. And you want to spray directly down, or you can sweep across if you've got a big surface to cover, like a table, which would look amazing. So, here we are. So we've got that down. I bet some of you are thinking, what is this going to look like when it's finished? Because right now, it looks a bit crazy, if I'm honest. There's, there's paint everywhere, but hopefully, if you stick around for the big reveal, it will look nice. And then for my last square here, I'm going to move my actual pillowcase over. And I'm going to mask off this section now. I'm going to put a little bit on my mylar as well, because I want to try and keep my surface a little bit clean. Uh, I'm going to take the silver one. Now this one looks lovely, so you can use this against black, it looks beautiful, it's so nice. I absolutely love working with this one. But we're using it against white this time, just for a variation. So. And as well, you wouldn't even have to mask it all off, you could just do the entire cushion, you could do a whole set of all different marble sprays, or you could do one that's all marbled, one that's all painted. They look lovely, it's so nice when they're all together. So this is sort of getting there, achieved. So what I'm going to do now is peel back the tape. So this is the big reveal moment. So I hope you're excited. If I do have some bleeds, I will cover it in. But look how nice that's looking. Gives you such a nice crisp edge. I'm gonna take up all the edges. Please excuse my fingers, they're probably very messy. Here we are. And just look how nice that's looking. It looks absolutely beautiful, that edge there. And the tape has done that all for you. You don't have to be, I'm not very neat with my hands. So if I was to try to do that by hand, I would have had great difficulty. Elizabeth would probably be very good at that. She's a very, very skilled painter. But with me, I just sort of splat it on there. So this is definitely always gonna be in my craft stash. To keep peeling it away. And you could reuse this. I'm actually scrunching it all up, but you could save the tape. There's no reason why not. It's repositionable. Really yeah, yours usually looks like a Christmas tree with all the trimming <laughs> hanging down on the edge. So you've got all of the leftover tape. So I'm just going to get that off. There we are. Not too precious with it. Let's try and salvage some pieces for later. And there we are. So that's my cushion. I really like that. And you could actually, instead, if you wanted to do these lines that I've masked off, if you were to do it on a fabric that was already gold or any other colour that you wanted, I did it on white because I wanted to just show you the basic starter for it, you could paint those lines in and I think they would look amazing if I was to then go through these lines, I could then mask the black off, do all the lines a different colour, maybe like a pink or something that would look really nice. But I'm definitely going to do something extra to this, I think, for my next video. So for the next step, I will show you what I'm going to do on another cushion because this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm going to use my similar sort of colourways, and what I've done here is I've made one out of black fabric. So really simple envelope again, and what I've got is it's a, a rectangle shape, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to lay down the tape and paint with it again. So a really quick process, take some of my mixed media tape, and... I bet you're all thinking, David, you've just saved a piece of masking tape and put it on your desk, and I've just completely gone back to the roll and got a fresh piece. So, don't do what I just did. Always save your pieces, but it's there if I need it. In fact, I will need it for the next step, so I'm going to use it. So, what I'm going to do now is put a paper towel just under here, so I'm not going to get my surface too messy, because I know what I'm like. I'll end up spreading it everywhere, and that way I know that I can keep it nice and clean. I'm going to take my flat brush again. You could use whatever brush you want. You could use a sponge, um, or you could use, you could even try it with a palette knife, actually. That might look nice. But this way I find I get a nice even coverage with it. Uh, sometimes I prefer to use the sponge if I'm working on a hard surface, such as wood or a canvas, because they do give really quick coverage. And I think sometimes, it's not always meaning that you want the job done quickly. It just means it's easier. So always work with tools that are going to help you in your, in your craft, because that's what they're there for. They're always there to aid you. So I'm going in with the Dora Hybrid again, just across that line. You can see instantly how well it's covering it. It looks absolutely beautiful. So, Kasia just said that she loved your pillow. Oh, thank you very much, um, Kasia. Nikki said, I just noticed the little gnome in the background, so cute. <laughs> right, so I wondered who would notice the gnome. Thank you for spotting that, Nikki. So, keep out for this little guy. 
because you might see more of them and his friends later on throughout the weeks to come, maybe in September. So watch out for that, it's really exciting. I know everyone's gonna absolutely love what we've got coming up, but a little bit of a teaser and they might start jumping around the office. So watch out for that as well. So what I'm gonna do now is take my hair dryer and just give this a quick blast. It should be pretty much almost touch dry, but just to ensure it's there. Once again, take my tape away and it's given us no bleed at all, it's perfect. So I'm taking my tape, see I'm learning whilst I'm doing these videos as well, which I think is great because I sort of pick up on my own mistakes I think while I'm doing it. So you can see, really nice line again, absolutely lovely. So what I'm going to do with this is something a little bit different. So what I've done is I've taken a die and I've cut out just this basic shape. I was going to use maybe a triangle or a circle, but I thought this looks a little bit more fancy and with the gold sort of geometric patterns. We see a lot of them in stores, very on trend. So I thought I'd try and recreate something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my Cadence stencil spray. So perfect spray for this job. It's not going to leave any horrible residue on my fabric. It's going to keep it nice and clean, but it's also going to give me the crisp edge I want to, so I don't get any paint around it. And you'll see it sort of acts a little bit like a stencil. So I've got a box down here, I'm going to spray into it just so that I know it's not going all over my desk. I only did a really tiny amount. I'm going to place this, just judging it slightly in the centre of my pillow, just like that. So I've got that down there, and then the next step I'm going to do is I've cut myself some strips of card. And what I'm going to do is actually spray my marble again onto the surface, but I don't want it to overlay onto this here. And I didn't want to marble and then paint over it because then the ridges of the marble may show through the paint. So I've actually thought that through that little bit. So hopefully it should turn out quite nicely. So if I lay these over just gently, it will just give me a little bit of a break in between where I'm spraying. So it's sort of acting a little bit like the masking tape, but it's always good to use your offcuts, use whatever bits you've got left over. In fact, I might want another little piece there because you always find that they'll come in handy. And I think I've got a box of about a thousand pieces of card that are maybe just this big or anything really. They always come in loose, they're perfect. Oh, we've got an extra one. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, there we are, see? Perfect. I was going to eat into another piece then, but got it sorted. Have we had any more questions or anyone joining at all? said that she can't wait to see all the new so she's so excited. I think we're really excited as well, aren't we? <laughs> I'm so excited for that. It's it is gonna be amazing and it's something we've not had before and that's it's what we all like. Different, something it? new, something that we've uh, we've not seen much on the show so definitely watch out for that. So once again I'm gonna go in with my gold marble spray. So I'm gonna give it a light shake, keep my distance from where I'm spraying it and also make sure whatever room you're doing it is all covered. I'm not gonna get it on the tables. So I've gone a little bit more than I did on the cushion because I want you to really be able to see where I've actually stenciled around that. So I do a little bit more there. Perfect. And it sort of creates a webbing effect. So you could do something different with this. It could be really good for Halloween as well. So if you were to cover it over a surface of pots or something or small plant pots you might not want anymore. Great, Spray it over it, yeah, it'd catch all over the surface. Amazing. Yeah, it'd give a nice webbing effect. I think we definitely need to try yeah, that. Do <laughs> because we all loved making craft items for Halloween. I know I do. So, I love it, yeah. yeah. So what I've got now is I've got this in the middle and what I'm going to do is simply peel it away. And that's left me with a nice hexagon. I think it's a hexagon shape. Yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, it's left with a nice blackout image there. And then what I want to do is take one of our imagination stencils. So this one here, I think is from our Simple Sheet collection. I absolutely love these stencils. We've got some lovely scripts on here. These are still on the website as well, so you can still get these. So the element I'm wanting to take is the crown. I think that would look really nice in the middle. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my Cadence spray again. So I've sprayed that just into my box and then get it the right way around. And I'm going to sort of judge where about the middle is. In fact, and you don't have to be too quick with it as well. Once you've sprayed, you don't have to instantly place it down. It's repositionable and it won't dry straight away. So you know, you can still be able to get a nice finish with it. I'm going to smooth out the back of my cushion. Here we are. Take my stencil. 
I'm not going to look too much on that. That should be fine. But I'm definitely, you know, it's not going to bleed. And this is going to be interesting because I'm judging now where the centre of it is going to be. And I think if I make a tiny marker, let's have a look. Hmm. In fact, I'm going to judge it with this little speck of dust that's in the middle. Because I forgot to bring pencil in, but we don't need one. It's fine. So a little speck of dust in the centre there, and I've got a central part in my stencil. So it's always good to gauge where you're going to put your stencil because once that's painted down, it's there. So if I pop that there, that should now mean that my stencil is exactly where I want it. In fact, I'm going to prove it's repositionable as well and have a second go. Let's have a look. I wanted it to be straight then. There we go. And always pull your fabric as well. That's one thing I learned is when you're placing your stencils on fabric, always make sure that you pull your fabric across because if you've got any ridges in there or folds under your stencil and you start to add your paint or other mediums, it may then bleed. So always make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to take my Dora Hybrid again and I'm going to take a really small stipple brush for this one and using a little bit of my masking tape that I used earlier, I'm going to mask off the areas I don't want paint to go. I think I probably would be okay judging it, but just to be on the safe side, there's nothing worse than when your stencils and you forgot to mask it off and then you realise it's all over the edges. So always use these lovely reliable products as they will help you grow. There we are. And these stencils are so beautifully designed by Sam and Sarah and our design team. It's um, it's all well thought about to work to your project. So Take elements from them, use all of them. This would look nice on surface patterns, so on furniture as well, as well as fabric, things like that. I'm gonna cover just that tiny bit, just in case I splat it somewhere. There we go. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my paint on a little stipple brush, and I'm working from the pot, because I'm not gonna mix it with any other medium, so I know I'm not going to ruin my paint. I'm not gonna put any gessos or anything else in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit out and pop it into the lid. I'm gonna go straight through with my stencil. So the marble spray, I believe, if it's the marble spray, yes, it dries really fast. So within about two minutes, it's completely dry. Um, and it's quite warm in here, so it will dry even quicker than that. Um, and if it was a stencil spray, I believe it was a marble spray, you probably always make a couple of mints. But the stencil spray, it will just keep its tackiness until you want to take it away from your stencil. That's the beauty of it, is it will always remain a little bit of tackiness on there. So thank you for your question, Kasia. If I don't cover anything that you want to know about any of the products, any, any points or maybe what's in them, or some drying times of products, please do let me know, because I'll be there to answer all your questions. And if it's one on there that I can't quite answer, or something I'm not 100% sure and I want to give you the right answer, so I'll definitely look into it for you and drop a comment on the video afterwards. Um, Nikki's just said, creating apertures with marble sprays gives such an amazing effect. Oh, thank you. It does. It looks amazing. The marble sprays, the such. I mean, I never knew. Yeah, we never knew they existed from Cadence. And when we first started and we saw them, I mean, I'm going to keep that actually as well because that looks nice. Um, we were completely blown away by the effects that you get with them. So if I take this away, we're left. Yeah, left. We're left with a nice cushion. So I really like that. I'm actually quite impressed. I'm well chuffed. Um, so. That was actually really easy to do. It was so easy and you would probably pay quite a bit for something, this sort of design in a shop. And these are exactly what I saw where I went to stay. And it sort of creates like a bit of a memory, a bit of a memento from either your holiday or just if you want to create something really nice for your home. And again, these would work really nice in a setting that's more country style or even in a style that's very ultra modern and a little bit contemporary. So completely versatile, you can do so much with it. So I'll definitely be uploading some pictures of these in my house later on. Um, and then what I've got for you is I did get asked a question on my last video from I think Alison, do correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Alison that asked me the question and it was about printing photos onto rice paper and it's not something I'd done but I'd printed my the rice paper images, my designs onto Sumi paper, they look lovely and I thought what a good idea to do with the photos. So I've got a little bit left over of my fabric here. I just wanted to show you, and I've printed it on both sides because I know a few people have been asking what size best. Is it the shiny side, the rough side? Best side to print on is the shiny side. You're gonna get a nice glossy finish and it will sit nicely on the surface. If you want to do it on the other side, you can do it. It's entirely up to you. But way of it getting the best quality out of your rice paper is the glue is better to stick to the back of the rice paper because it's a rougher surface. So you're gonna get a better adhesion there. And you might be able to spot in this picture here, if I hold it against this white fabric, you might see it a little better. 
is the cushion I made last week and that's my dog sat enjoying herself in the sun next to the cushion so that's little Peggy so I thought I will have a go at decoupaging this on some fabric for you just to see how it turns out because a few people were unsure whether it would work with a photo or how it might turn out so I'm going to use the one with the shiny side up because that's the way I believe it's probably best for you to do and I've got a guillotine here so all I'm going to do is usually I would feather the edges and uh, rip them or I would sort of tear them away I'm going to quickly guillotine it because I want it to be a nice crisp finish and then I'm probably going to add some elements in it at a later date so with this, you, would, you could use scissors for this but just for the, the process of it I'm going to use the guillotine to get a little quick, bit quicker for you guys um, Cash has just said very nice and quick to do yeah exactly, um, thank you Amanda's just said I love these, they're so different Oh, thank you. And um, Adrian has just asked, can you use the hybrid acrylic and the raw metallics for fluid art like acrylic balls? You can do. That's actually something really interesting. Thank you ever so much for your question. So, with these paints, they're that versatile. I actually experimented last week with acrylic pores. So, watch out for that on the show because we may or may not be in the future. I don't know. <laughs> something interesting, something exciting. But yes, acrylic pore is something you can do with your cadence paints. They're a hybrid. So, even though they're multi surface, they're multi use. So you could use them for like folk art painting. A lot of people like to do the detail painting. Stephanie does a lot of those, they're amazing. And you can use those on all surfaces, but you can also mix them with pouring mediums or watercolor painting. You can water them down, they look absolutely beautiful. So yes, to answer your question, definitely. So here I've cut out my image. Get rid of that out of the way. And then I've got my little picture of Peggy here. And I'm gonna take my decoupage glue, in fact, this is my brand new glue, this one. I've not even opened it yet, so big reveal of the new glue for the video. <laughs> I think it's always quite satisfying opening the fresh product. So onto the back of my rice paper this time. I'm going to take my fabric away first. I'll do it over here. So just on the tops and the bottom. I'll take a flat brush for this as I don't want all my glue to gather up into my brush um, or sponge. I want it to just be nice and quick and now I'm going to get the most out of my product. So straight onto the back there. And I've only done this on a piece of fabric, but I could turn it into a cushion or it could be anything really personal, even a little um, stretch canvas or something like that. I look nice. So just taking all that excess glue off because we don't want any big bumps underneath. There we go. So I'm gonna lay in flat there a second. I don't know why I called my uh, picture him then. I don't know why I thought that. Like Peggy is a girl. She's <laughs> I think I always refer to things as people when I'm working with them. I don't know why. <laughs> so here we are. I'm going to lay it flat just on my fabric like that. Take my brush because I've still got a bit of product on here. Making the most of it. Not going back to the bottle just yet. Let's move that out. Always work from the top and centre outwards because you don't want any creases. And it'll give you a nice smooth finish. Here we are. And then I would just blast this with the hairdryer, iron it to heat set it, and then it's washable. So that's our picture decoupage. So really interesting, fun way of doing it. So we've got the picture decoupage, we've got a nice cushion inspired by I think a nice, well my nice little breakaway, and sort of a little bit of a regal gold theme which I think is very nice. And also a nice sort of geometric sort of Aztec-y pattern cushion. So I've not put a filling in there, but what I'm going to do is upload a photo later, all the cushions set out nicely, and I might even do something with this so that you can see the finished sort of product at the end. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Have we got any more questions at no, all? No. no, but I will answer any more questions that we have. So thank you ever so much for Elizabeth as well, <laughs> helping me out. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. I've really enjoyed doing it. It's been really nice. So look out for the video next week. And also next week you will be seeing me on Create and Craft, so look out for that as well. We've got something really exciting. I'll be giving you some sneak peeks of what we've got coming up on the show, something very different. And I'm really excited to actually launch something that I've not done before. So we've had loads of imagination shows so far, and this is something we've decided to launch for you that's a bit different and exciting. So please look out for that. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll be sending you some pictures soon. So thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.